Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, and this time we're gonna use the GIMP. I'm gonna use my first image, so I'm gonna use super hot massive star. So this image I got from the NASA Media Gallery, which is a free uh, open source image uh, resource that you should use for your images. So here's the first image, and I could make some adjustments to it if I wanted to. I could go to uh, curves. You might recognize some of these here. Uh, Hue Chroma is a fun one. Whoa. Just mess around with different effects. Darker, yeah, cool. Okay, and then I'm going to drag in my second photo right on top of this one. And you should see it pop up as a new layer. So Shift T is the shortcut in the GIMP to resize. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna scale it down. And if I also hold down control and scroll, I can zoom in. And if I use the uh, middle mouse wheel and like click on it like a button and then move it, move my mouse around, um, I can move this uh, image on the workspace. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to right click on the top layer and add an alpha channel. And an alpha channel means transparency basically. So now that I accepted that change and now I should have, yeah, so I still have that alpha channel that I added. So that means that now instead of when I erase this image on top, if I didn't add that alpha channel, when I erase it would become white. It would basically be like erasing on a white piece of paper. But since I added that alpha channel, since the alpha means transparency, when I erase now it'll kind of be like I'm erasing um, like I'm cutting away that part of the image or erasing onto a transparency. So I'm going to use the eraser tool now. You could also use the lasso selection. Actually, let's do the lasso selection. So I'm going to use this to draw an outline of this window area. Something like that. And connect. And then I'm going to delete. Select none, control shift A. That's what it is, shift control A. So I'm gonna use the eraser tool now to get these edges. And I'm gonna use the brackets as the shortcut to make my eraser smaller. So this has got kind of a soft edge, which is nice. You can see it's kind of feathering uh, the edge of where I'm erasing. And this, is, this would be definitely easier if you have a a tablet with a pen, but I'm just using my mouse. It's kind of like drawing with a rock, <laughs> but it gets the job done. Um, so just like in Snapseed, the, the closer you, well, unlike Snapseed, your eraser does not change size depending on how zoomed in you are, but it, it does get easier to control when you're zoomed in closer. So I rec recommend uh, using your control and scroll wheel to scroll in and out to check how your image is looking from different perspectives. So I'm just about done erasing now. Erase this. Erase down here. And again, use the, the bracket keys on your keyboard to make your brush smaller or bigger. So now, let's see, I'm going to add some more effects over here. Yep, yep, I'm liking where this is going. Cool, so this is looking pretty good. Um, if you want to add text, you can do so here with the text tool. And it's important to think about how text changes the way that a viewer interprets an image. So with text, by adding text to your image, you can pretty much guarantee that that's where the viewer's eye will go first. That's, that's the first thing that they're gonna see. They're gonna go to the text and they're definitely gonna read it um, if, they can, if they can read. And even if they can't read, the text is, is a focal point of a viewer's attention. So um, even if it's not something that a, a person understands, it still draws their attention to it. So that's something to keep in mind. So 
you can draw a text box here and start typing and change the color into something that's readable, visible. And let's see, let's make the size a little bigger. And change the font to something else. Okay. Well, that's looking pretty interesting. So I'm going to, oh, you know what I haven't done this whole time? I haven't saved it. So file, save as. I want to believe. And I'm gonna save it to, just gonna save it to my desktop for now. And you can see it's got this weird uh, uh, extension here. That means it's a working file. So you'll be able to make changes and go back and, and make different edits to your images. But one more thing I should show you here, instead of using filters up here in the top, you can also select a layer and use the uh, adjustment modes right here where it says mode and says normal now. You can use uh, any of these to uh, create different, totally different effects. So definitely play around with those as well. You can get some really cool stuff happening there. Whoa, that's amazing. Hey, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna keep that one. Control S to save it. And now I'm gonna go down to File Export. And I can save this. You can save it as a, as a PNG here. You could also save it as a JPEG. PNG is fine. Um, and I'll just save it to the desktop again. Export. And I'm not gonna worry about any of this. Sounds good, export. Great, and there we have it, finished image. So that's how to make your composite photo montage images in both Snapseed and in the GIMP. You could also try using pixlr.com uh, if you want to try the web browser version without having to download any programs, but these are both really great programs. I suggest trying them out, and I look forward to seeing what your creations look like. Good luck.